Welcome to tonight's broadcast. I'm your host, Betty May, and we're going to be going over the highlights of the 1930s. We'll be starting out with two of the biggest events, the Great Depression and Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal. The Great Depression began when the stock market crashed October 29th, 1929. Between 1930 and 1933, over 9,000 banks closed. As a result of the Great Depression, over 15 million Americans were unemployed. In 1932, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was previously a governor of New York, won the presidential election. He created this thing called the New Deal, which included the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the Glass-Steagall Banking Bill, the Homeowners Loan Act, the Tennessee Valley Authority Act, the National Industry Recovery Act, and others that were very important aspect of the 1930s. In spring 1935, Roosevelt launched the second New Deal, which included reforms like the Work Progress Administration, the Wagner Act, and the Social Security Act. His programs, although unsuccessful and completely ending the Great Depression, helped to temporarily improve the conditions of citizens during, of the United States during economic turmoil in the 1930s. We now let's move on to our special guest. Hello, thanks for coming to our broadcast tonight. Who are you? Hi, I'm Shirley Temple. I'm here for an interview with the television. Okay, Shirley Temple, what are you known for best? I'm a popular child star from the 1930s. I'm known for my musicals, and I was one of Hollywood's greatest box office attractions. Did you receive any Academy Awards? Yeah, I was named the most outstanding personality in 1934 for my Academy Award. What effect did your role in Bright Eyes have? I helped and save Fox Film Corporation from bankruptcy. It was so popular. What other films have you starred in? I've starred in other films like The Little Colonel, Curly Top, Wee Lily Winky, Heidi, and Rebecca of Sunny Brook Farm. Do you have any plans for when you're older? When I'm older, I'll be sure to become a part of politics and civic affairs. Thank you, Shirley Temple. Now we will take a look at a popular clip featuring you. Lions and tigers watching me I make them jump right through a loop There's animal crackers in my soup When I get a hold of the big bad wolf I just push him under to drown Then I buy him into a million bits And I gobble him right down When they're inside me where it's dark I walk around with no one's lurk I stuff my tummy like a goop that was great, Miss Temple. Now on to sports. Dang, I love me some baseball. 1930 saw a decrease in attendance of baseball games, however, as a result of the Great Depression. The National Football League was also affected, and players consequently made less money. Fortunately for athletes and sports companies, Radio broadcasting of boxing, tennis, football, baseball, and even the Winter Olympics in 1932 helped revive the industry. Sports also became more commercialized, boosting the ailing paychecks of sports players. Popular sports figures include Jesse Owens, a runner, and Joe Lewis, a boxer. Joe Lewis went against Max Schmeling in 1938, a match often to refer to as um, freedom versus fascism, <laughs> a reference towards the boxers' nationalities. Women's sports also progressed. The first women's gymnastics championships was held in 1931, and women's cycling championship took place in 1939. Mildred Didrikson was also a major female athlete, winning 632 of the 634 amateur athletic competitions she entered. 
Here are some previously recorded clips of me showing my love for baseball. Wasn't that just lovely? We'll be back to our broadcast after this brief commercial break. You're not you when you're hungry. Much better. Now let's move on to the entertainment segment of tonight's show. The most watched movie in history was The Wizard of Oz. First a book series, The Wizard of Oz was published in 1900 and written by Frank Baum. Despite the movie making $3 million and receiving great reviews, it was not considered profitable because it cost $2.8 million to make. However, with its debut on television in November 1956, it made a lot more money. Starring Judy Garland, The Wizard of Oz had a cast of over 600 actors and over 1,000 costumes. Furthermore, the producers of The Wizard of Oz utilized a Technicolor camera which recorded scenes through a color filter on three different strips of film. These strips were processed and color was added. The Wizard of Oz was nominated for an Academy Award six times and the song Over the Rainbow won two Oscars for best song. Ooh, fun fact. In the book of The Wizard of Oz, the ruby slippers were actually silver. Although The Wizard of Oz was not the first film to have color, it its popularity made it clear that color was a valuable tool in drawing audiences to theaters with its whimsical qualities. We'll be back to our broadcast after this brief commercial break. Wow, golly, I'm so close to free parking. Yep, you are. Wow. Five spaces and the Jefferson Memorial. This is such a great family-friendly game. And it's great to teach your kids about capitalism. Monopoly. It's so fun. Now let's move on to the fashion trends of the 1930s. Now we will look at images displaying the wonderful fashion of the 1930s. For women, clothing had longer hems, nipped waists, broad shoulders, and puffed sleeves. Hollywood was also a large influence on the fashion, as displayed by the various formal dresses of this decade. Women also wore suits, much like men. As for men's fashion specifically, the suits had narrow waists, broad shoulders, shoulder pads, oversized pockets, and pointed lapels. Sharp! Polo shirts, bush shirts, and sweaters were also quite popular with the men. Overall, clothes were ready to wear as well, making good style easily accessible to all. Well, that's it for our broadcast. I'm your host, Betty May, and thank you for tuning in for the summary of the 1930s. Welcome tonight to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I almost got free parking. I mean, not really, but sure. <laughs> <laughs>